really walking on, in the footsteps of history. Today, we're going to keep these statistics in mind. Come on, you doctors. Let's get out there. Addition to the finest ladies of Manhattan. I said I loved you. It doesn't matter what culture we are from, what our race is, what our gender is, we are all people and we are all entitled to the same benefits. When I, Mrs. Margaret Sanger, opened operations behind the curtain windows, 464 women lined up outside the doors of the first birth control clinic in America. Fetuses do not ask to pee when their feet are in the stirrups. It will be very important that the bathrooms get cleaned every day. Feminine products. Maybe there's a half breath extra after that justice line. What you have to do when you're scared about anything political that was beautiful. Thank you. It's gonna be a beautiful caper. But this is so rich. I feel like it's gonna it's gonna stand out. We want people to be able to see like a scarf from far away. I already checked in your friend. She has to sign the release and then she's gonna Right, okay, cool. And then we can get to judge it. That much more awesome. It's so fun. Alright, group three. Everyone who's coming with me, group three, let's head right across the street. If you have questions, uh, hold on to them, be at the fair, talk to the experts, and also to talk to each other uh, because uh, I'm no expert, so I encourage you to bring your questions to the whole group to engage in a dialogue as we walk. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all human beings, irrespective of race, color, or sex, are born with the equal right to share at the table of life. Emma Goldman uh, is a great way to start talking about the intersectionality of reproductive justice with other uh, other movements uh, and the way that class and uh, and money can often bump up against reproductive justice and women's rights. Okay. There's this one episode that you guys might remember. Lean is talking to Jerry, and, and Kramer butts in and says that he read in the Wall Street Journal that the sponge is going off the market. So Elaine says to Kramer, no, 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 no way. Everybody loves the sponge. Exactly. The thing about the sponge is that you can buy it at King's Drug Store. $36 for two years instead of like way, way more. <laughs> you know, just like way better than putting garbage inside your body and putting garbage in, um, in the ground. And so in case you haven't heard about it, <laughs> spread the word. Um, the one I use is called the Diva Cut, but there are a lot of different brands. So I work in a community health center, and so I work with like midwives also, so high five for midwives, but also talking about like feminine washes and all those other things. Number one, if, if things were supposed to smell like flowers, they would. They don't because they're not supposed to. As I walked to work, what did I see? Prostitutes roaming the streets, out in the open, erotica, shops selling pornographic books and drawings, printers pouring them into the mail, Evil lurking in the shadows, trapping the weak in sin. Today we're going to keep today's struggle for reproductive justice in mind as we head into the next portion of our tour and, and pass around the hospital. Maternal mortality yeah, rate is highest, yeah, is highest uh, in the U.S. of any industrialized nation and higher even for African American women in New York than it is for other populations. So the maternal mortality rate in New York City went up 30% in the last 10 years. Why a fetus is a better patient than a pregnant woman. Two, fetuses do not ask to go and pee while their feet are in the stirrups. And the number one reason why a fetus is a better patient than a pregnant woman, well, pregnant women are women. 
and the fetus just might be a boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Added a thinking and reconsideration period of 72 hours before a prescription may be written. <laughs> and must have letters from wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, and all sexual partners consenting to the issuance of Viagra. <laughs> and before final dispensation must undergo a rectal exam, cardiac stress test, and full colonoscopy. Now, it will be very important, Elvira, that you pick him up from school every day at 3 p.m. sharp. He gets very upset if we're not there at exactly 3 p.m. This is his first year in public school. He's making friends and adjusting. It will be very important, Elvira, that you arrive at the school every day at 3 p.m. Do you have any children of your own, Elvira? That's the site of the original Trojan Condom Factory. It was built in 1929. It was the headquarters for Trojan Condoms. But in 1916, condoms were still illegal under the Comstock laws. Remember our friend Anthony? Merle sold them through doctors and through pharmacies. He advertised them as no fail. Uh, he used triple dip rubber, which sounds very impressive. He sold them for $150 a dozen, and they earned him a fortune even during the Great Depression. People were willing to shell out the $150 for a dozen condoms. Cheaper than a kid. Cheaper than a kid. Mothers, can you afford to have a large family? Do you want any more children? If not, why do you have to have them? Do not kill, do not take life, but prevent. My handbills, in English, Yiddish, and Italian, urged women to come to a storefront tenement on Amboy Street in an impoverished section of Brooklyn. In the 10 days from October 16, 1916, when I, Mrs. Margaret Sanger, opened operations behind the curtain windows, 464 women lined up outside the doors of the first birth control clinic in America. I was half dragged, half carried to a patrol wagon. Failing to pay the $500 bail after arraignment, I was placed overnight in a cell known for its cold temperature and vermin infestation. My sister was arrested shortly afterwards. From the far corner of the room, one word was uttered. Shame. That's it, guys. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, yeah. We're just going to have just a few, few steps over. Huh. How's it going? <laughs> from every ward, between the Battery and Bleecker, from New Jersey, from up the Hudson in Dobbs Ferry, up the Sound in Norwalk. Well, I went along to 30 births. The mothers moaned and carried on, but when they were true, most of them smiled and looked down at their raw new infants with wet eyes glinting. It's a beautiful gift of God, Mrs. Evans said, her own eyes crinkled with wonder. And it was. As disgusting as the blessed event seemed to me at first, I soon was dumbstruck at the power and workings of the female machine. So when we were standing watching the monologues, there was a woman who had stopped to see what was going on. And she asked me what was going on. And I told her, I was like, oh, it's a reproductive justice walking tour. And the concept of reproductive justice, like, she just totally didn't understand it. She's like, oh, are you all new moms? Or... <laughs> and then I had to explain, no, it's about abortion, birth control, sexuality, erotica, prostitution, the history of the city surrounding those issues. And it was just like, oh, interesting. <laughs> People gain their freedom, including Frederick Douglass in, 19, in 1838, who stopped here when he was headed towards freedom. In 1848, when he was an orator and a slavery abolitionist, he was the only African American to attend the first Seneca Falls Convention for Women's Rights, where he spoke in favor of women's suffrage and won the vote for it. Even now, Women in Manhattan buy a tea for three dollars at Botanica's, called Herba de Ruda, a non-edible plant of a very strong smelling leafy green stalk. <coughs> the tea is prescribed by Santeros to, in to induce 
abortion. One woman explained, women resort to quiet acts of desperation in the face of an unwanted pregnancy. It started with my father's seed. It began with my mother's scream. The century is an important home to um, not only reproductive justice activism, but also gay rights, uh, civil rights, and we've kind of uh, we think that these terms all kind of unite under the umbrella of reproductive justice, which is a term that not only acknowledges the the pro-choice movement, but a lot of other struggles that come together. We're really walking on the, in the footsteps of history as we head up towards Washington Square Park, uh, and we're going to meet our last, our final performers, and then go on uh, to the reproductive justice fair. Uh, that you've got to do something. And until you do that something that involves a risk, you shouldn't, though of course you will, complain about anybody else's apathy. You are the apathetic one you can control and have no legitimate basis for criticizing anybody else. I said I loved you and I wanted nobody thirst and nobody nobody cold. I said, I loved you and I wanted, I wanted justice under my nose. It's really inspiring for me to see so many of you here today and to watch the groups go out filled with people who are, who are passionate about this, this movement and who are creating change. It's really, it's really awesome for me to see it. So thanks so much for being here everyone. constipated, I'm thirsty all the time, life looks, you know, bleak and hopeless. <laughs> now these things in themselves, they are what they are, but when they come all at once, I know to carry a tampon. 